Okay, we're gonna try something a little bit different today. Um, I was down in the field looking at my, uh, do, doing a deep dive of the two hives that survived and, and it was like so many other beekeepers, this, this was just a devastating uh, winter. And the, uh, the wind did not cooperate with me and it, the, the sound was just, just horrendous. Everything was just a wind tunnel in the background. So um, if I had left it the way it was, then the vast majority of you would have gone click and gone to something else by now. So I'm gonna try to do kind of like a, a narration uh, of my hive inspections, what went right, mostly what went wrong, um, and then how I'm going to uh, plan my my way forward. So, um, like I've, I've said in my previous videos, uh, it was a devastating year. I, I went into the winter with uh, about 12 hives and uh, came out of the winter with two. So, and one of those is still really, really weak, and, and we'll talk about that once we get here in the video. So, um, but in the meantime, you know, some of the things that I'm already looking forward to. Uh, number one, <laughs> let's go to something else while I'm waiting for the video to come up. I guess I could cut that out, but uh, I, I've got this uh, from last year. Uh, I've been doing some mead making, and this year's a, is an apple sizer. It's been going since last September, and it's it probably could be bottled right now, but um, I'm letting it uh, bulk age a little bit longer, so. But anyways, uh, here we are in, into the first hive, and um, they, they have plenty of food. Uh, these, you know, both these hives, mainly because I took all the honey out of all the dead outs and consolidated them and used them as my spring feed. So right now these hives are set up as uh, dual uh, brood boxes. Most of you that know me know that I am a single brood box uh, management style kind, kind of beekeeper, so. Um, I just did that just to get the, the food on the hives. So uh, as I'm going through this hive here, I've still got plenty of food, uh, tons and tons of honey. Uh, there's pollen packed in there, there's bee bread. Um, and then uh, the, on this particular hive, the, the nest had worked its way up from the bottom uh, brood box up to the top. And that's what I'm getting to at this point right here. This frame that I pulled out, um, was a really heavy one, it had a lot of honey on it. Uh, that was just probably eight to 10 pounds of honey right there. And then this next frame, uh, I started seeing, I was getting close to the nest, so on the other side that's not showing right now, uh, I actually have a little bit of brood there, uh, which again, is always a good sign, especially at this time of year. And uh, and, and I noticed that the, the population has, has actually increased since I was down there last last time, which was two weeks ago. Uh, when I went down and did a real quick assessment, um, found out what I had uh, for survival rates, and then just just instantly treated them with uh, Formic Pro, um, just just to try to you know make get a recovery. So this one here, um, I'm trying to see it now. You'll you'll see the the more and more of the bees start building up on it. In, in this particular hive, there was about two. Uh, really good uh, frames and you'll see the bees here there's quite a few bees on that side but still not not anything major uh, the next the next frame is really where it starts getting heavy uh, where you see a lot of brood and uh, I actually found the queen so uh, that's always a good sign when the queen pops right out now it is an unmarked queen and all of my queens last summer were marked so they requeened and I didn't catch it last year my thumb is actually pointing to the queen and obviously you probably can't see it in the video, but there's tons of uh, a, a pretty good brood pattern, pattern going on that frame right there um, on both sides. And so I'm pretty happy with that. So w within a month, um, you know, a, a frame full of brood uh, equals two to three frames of bees. So um, in another month or so, th this hive here is gonna do really, really well. And again, the same thing with this frame here, um, some brood and then, uh, you know, quite a bit of bees on it. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh, my my recovery. I'm not happy with the position I'm in, but I'm happy in, in, in the direction I'm headed at this point. Yeah, that sizer is really good. <laughs> I've, I've got uh, bottles of wine that I bought from local vineyards that I've more or less just dumped out because I like my stuff a lot better. Uh, not, not That's not to say that theirs are all bad. Uh, there's some really good wine around here. I'm just at the point now where I just, I like drinking my own stuff 
and uh, I, I kind of have grown fond to it, you know. So, uh, but anyway, so I'm, I'm finishing up the inspection on the top frame here, and what I'm going to end up doing is on a, assuming I use 10 frames, and in this particular case, I ended up using nine, but the, the two outside will be honey and food, you know, stores, and then I'm going to have empty ones, and then the middle is where the brood nest is going to be. That's going to give that queen plenty of room to expand um, before she gets, you know, um, you know, honey locked in. You know, there's uh, uh, no, no room for eggs, you know, because there's so much honey. So I, uh, I've got, you know, three or four frames of honey in this particular brood box here. And you'll see in a few minutes as I, as I do the rotation to, to uh, put it down. And actually, I just I put it back to a single brood box for now because I don't I, I find that uh, bees, when they have a lot of space, uh, get stressed. And so you, it's a struggle finding that balance between uh, enough space and too much space. You know, uh, if they have too much space, they get stressed. If they have too little space, they swarm uh, or they become, you know, um, honey bound and there's no room to lay eggs. So what I'm, what I'm doing is, is it, again, it, this is the problem with, with single brood management is that you've got to be a little bit more on your game. Uh, you can't just let things go, uh, which is exactly what happened last, late last summer and, and fall, going into the fall and winter. But uh, that being said, I do, I do like the, the single brood box management. So, um, and here I'm just kind of cleaning it up, lining everything up you know, as far as the frames go. And uh, like I said, I'm putting the honey on the outside, putting the brood in the middle, and then a couple of empties on both sides of the brood. And uh, it's, it's getting warm enough now here in central Maine so that I don't have to worry too, too much about the, the uh, brood getting chilled. But again, the, I mean, the chance is, I, I guess, is still there. I mean, we're only in, you know, we're getting towards the end of April. So uh, some of the other things that I've, that, uh, I've, I've thought about and I think I'm, I'm going to do is uh, uh, I've got a lot of wooden frames. Um, I, I try to stick with them the best I can, but I'm just finding that the, you know, the wood swells and the nails come undone and they're just, it's just a pain. And I, I'm finding that, you know, all things equal, the plastic ones tend to hold up better. And so I'm using less of them. Uh, they last a lot longer for me, at least. That seems to be the uh, the uh, consensus. Um, you know what what other beekeepers find. You know, uh, you know. I try to be as sustainable as possible and try to use things that are as good for the environment. But if I'm, you know, if I'm if I'm constantly swapping out wooden frames because they're breaking or, or whatever, am I really being, you know, uh, that environmentally conscious? You know, if I'm if if we have to constantly hack down trees, the plastic I use and use and use, uh, and then I try to recycle things the best I can. So um, we'll see. You know, I I may find in a year or two that I'm wrong and I and I go back to wooden frames. So uh, here I am down in the bottom brood box now, and uh, I, again I'm just kind of going through um, cleaning out anything that's dead from from the winter, and then you know pulling the honey the frames with honey aside. Uh, there was no brood or anything down below. Everything was up above. And so uh, here in a few minutes, what I'll do is I'll pull this whole bottom box off, put that other one with the, with the nest in it down, and then just, like I said, convert it back to a single brood box. And uh, so uh, I really wish the audio was on because it was a lot of things that I found there. And, and some, sometimes videos, when they're raw, uh, they, 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 they mean a lot more to the people watching versus these split videos uh so hopefully the next time i go back down i can do just just the raw videos and i don't have to do this commentary over it but uh you'll see me scraping off all the dead uh dead bees from last winter and i just like i said i'm just getting that stuff out, off the hives uh trying to help them out and and this whole thing is coming off anyways but i'm just trying to get that stuff off the frames the best i can and then a lot of that stuff i'll bring back the house or i have brought back already i'll go through clean it up uh, decide if I want to keep the frame, get rid of it, and then, uh, you know, figure out how I'm going to work that rotation of getting those frames back into the circulation, you know, once I start doing my splits. And uh, one of the things I did notice over the winter was um, mice. Um, and I said this before in, the, in my last video is that I, I didn't use my mice guards at all. Uh, again, it was, wasn't because of, you know, I just didn't think they were needed. It was just, 
life got away from me um, and I didn't get a chance to get anything on it. And before you know it, it's the middle of the winter. And, and so, you know, what I found this spring, you know, in, in some, some respects surprised me because like I said, I only had one hive with, with the mouse problem and that particular one I'll take and uh, th those frames will most definitely get, you know, 86 and then um, the box itself, I'll, uh, I'll hose down really good and scrub it with some bleach and then, um, you know, put that one back in rotation eventually. Um, and so now I'm moving the, the bottom box and just setting it aside and then I'm going to go ahead and clean that bottom board off and that's something I haven't done yet um, I've stuck a stick in there and just kind of pulled out a bunch of dead stuff but I hadn't cleaned it yet this year so um, I went and scraped off all the dead you know bees the cappings and all that stuff uh, I use solid bottom boards at this point I've used the uh, the um, um, the checkerboarded um, Oh, integrated IPM boards uh, before. Um, I, I, I generally treat my, my hives regardless of, of whether I find mites or not. I, I'll only do a couple of mite counts a year, um, you know, ordinarily just to see how they're doing. I, I, I automatically assume coming out of the winter that there's going to be mites, so I just treat. I don't bother to check. Um, and then a month or so later, um, you know, well before that first honey flow, uh, I'll generally treat again, and then maybe I'll check, uh, you know, or I'll spot check hives just to see where I'm at. And and usually it's really really low, uh, so I'm I, I like that. And then you know that that approach I guess. And then you know going through the honey flows, obviously I try to avoid any type of treatments. Um, and then uh, you know after that last honey flow, I'll do one and sometimes two uh, later in the fall. Last year again didn't do any in the fall, so. Um, that was, I'm sure that would, that had an impact uh, over the winter, but uh, so here I am. I'm closing up the hive now. Uh, it's it's down to a single brood box. Uh, I will leave it alone for a couple of weeks. I'll go down check it again. At that point, I'll determine uh, when I'm going to do my splits. And I am going to split this hive uh, probably into three, maybe four. I d I took one hive and split it into four last year, and it and it worked out fairly well. I'll probably look at doing the same thing, depending on if, if this queen is strong uh, in here in a couple of weeks, I'll go down and take a look. If I have um, brood on, on preferably six, but uh, you know, if I'm, if I'm close to six frames with brood on it and it's a good solid pattern, I'll go ahead and order uh, you know, three or more queens um, and, and or look for, for those queen cells there myself. Uh, sometimes I find it easier just to buy them. Uh, I know it's expensive, but a lot of times I don't have time to, to do the queen rearing thing. So, um, but, uh, so hopefully that one will turn into, you know, three to four hives here in about a month or so. Um, so here I am in the second one. And in this particular hive, it's not as strong as the, that other one was, that first one. It, uh, it does have bees in it, quite a few bees, actually more than I thought I had the other week when I was down there. Um, however, when I was going through it, uh, I didn't do a really, really deep inspection for the queen and did not find her. Uh, I thought it would have been relatively easy to locate her, uh, to, seeing how there really wasn't that many bees in it per se, you know, for a bee, for a beehive, there wasn't a lot. There was, there was a few there. Um, probably a couple of saying, you can see it there. There's a couple of frames with it, with a ball of bees on them. And as I was going through this, uh, these are all on the bottom. I didn't have to do any rotation on these but uh as i was going through these frames i did notice um some larvae and eggs so um you know hopefully that queen is there uh, we'll find out here in a couple of weeks when i go back down and look again if she is there i'm still gonna requeen this one because it's a miserable hive it was a miserable one last year and uh, i just didn't have time to requeen it and it's a miserable one this spring uh the bees are just a lot more testy than I want them to be. And uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, if that queen is there, I'll do a really good inspection until I find her, uh, pinch her and put in a, a new queen in. And because I just, there's no reason to have, you know, miserable hives. Uh, when you can requeen it, even, you know, queens right now online, 40 bucks, give or take. Uh, if I buy a local one, they're 50 or so. And to me, to have a, a calm hive, uh, that I don't have to worry about, you know, as much, uh, is, is worth that little bit of money. So, 
Uh, as you can see, I'm going through the, 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 the frames. Again, tons of honey because of the way I've got the honey pack in there, you know, from the dead outs and whatnot. Uh, so they're not going to starve, uh, which is a good thing uh, because there's not a lot of food out there right now. The dandelions are just barely starting to come out. Uh, there's some pollen sources out there. I, I saw some pollen being brought in, um, but there's not a lot of food. So fortunately, I do have a ton of honey in there and uh, other resources for them to tie, tie them through until the dandelions probably come out here. Another, another couple of weeks they'll come out and then in, you know within a month, it, it'll be pretty heavy dandelion season around here, uh, which is a good thing. So um, like I said, this hive here, uh, I, did not, I didn't even think it, it, it survived the winter. Uh, when I was down there about a month ago and looked, I, I just cracked open, looked in, didn't see anything, assumed it was dead just like the rest of them were. And um, when I went down two weeks ago, lo and behold, it's bees. Uh, and there was brood then as well. So um, uh, pretty happy that I've got two of them now that I can try to rebuild on. So um, like I said, it's, it's a devastating winter for me and a lot of other people. Uh, but I'm, uh, I'm pretty, pretty confident I can rebuild and, and, you know, and get to where I need to be. Um, and in, in the meantime, we, uh, will uh, you know, we'll adapt and overcome and, uh, we'll, we'll figure out the best, the best solution. Okay. So, so final thoughts, uh, like I said, the, the, the reason for my devastating loss was by and large neglect. Um, nothing I can do about it now other than trying to rebuild and uh, trying to figure out, uh, you know, the best path forward. So uh, a couple of things I am going to change is number one, uh, I'm not going to attempt uh, to do 10 or more hives anymore. Uh, in my present locations and uh, with my present lifestyle, I, I just can't do it. it there's... Uh, there's too much work. It's not a ton of work to be a beekeeper, but you do have to, it does require some work. Let me, let me see if I can get away from this wind. Um, so that's number one. Uh, number two is again, I'm, I'm gonna, I started last year and uh, I'm gonna keep doing it this year, is, is trying to uh, get, uh, make everything universal. So everything is gonna go to uh, deeps um, with the exception of a little bit of uh, uh, comb honey. Uh, I'm going to get rid of all my shallows and mediums and just go to deeps. Uh, it, it worked out really well for, for two years now. Uh, I've, I've been doing single broods and slowly moving towards that, that style of management, and it's worked wonderful. Um, uh, the third thing is, is uh, you know, force myself to be on a better schedule. Uh, this year should not be as chaotic as last year. Uh, and again, lot, lots of really, really good things happened last year. Uh, so I'm, I'm not complaining about being, you know, the things that made things busy, um, because they were wonderful. Uh, you know, my first son was born, I had a wedding ceremony, um, you know, I moved into a, another house and, uh, uh, still taking college courses, trying to get that degree and, uh, uh, our second degree now, but, uh, and then, uh, you know, a few other things. So yeah, there was a lot on my plate, but they, they were all really good things. So <laughs> not complaining one bit. Um, I just, like I said, just the physics of it just worked out so that I couldn't, uh, you know, commit myself to the bees as much as I should have, you know, with the number of hives that I had. And, uh, and so, uh, th those are the big things I'm going to work towards this year. Uh, I'm only going to be getting up to maybe six hives that, that I think that's, we'll try that and see how it goes. Um, and if we have to drop it down more, we'll drop it down more, but uh, it's not, not that big of a deal. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I want to get back into the book bookkeeping side of it a little bit more. Uh, if you go back and watch some of my first videos, it was all about the business side uh, of beekeeping. And uh, I really enjoy the business side of things. So uh, a lot of people, they have, they have these uh, hobbies. And, you know, for a lot of people, beekeeping is one of them. Um, and they want to turn it into a business. And uh, they think that that hobby is the business. And, and it's really not. It's two, two separate things. Uh, it's like carpenters. Ugh. Some of you carpenters kill me. Uh, you, you're great at what you do, but you're horrible at business at business. <laughs> That's just my editorial. Um, but, uh, but e either way, I'd, I'd like to get back to the business side of it and, uh, you know, maybe find some people that want to manage a few hives for me. And I, I think that's gonna, probably going to be one of the things I, I do next is, uh, just kind of farm out some of the, some of the work, the hobby part of it. And that allows me to focus on the business side. 
But uh, anyways, I, uh, I hope this has been, you know, informative. I'm, I'm trying to find, uh, you know, some value to these videos that uh, hopefully is not out there on YouTube and, you know, a million other times and, uh, you know, something that people can, can use and, and uh, grow and collaborate with, uh, you know, using this knowledge. So uh, have a great day and, uh, you know, good Lord willing and the creek don't rise, you know, I'll be back another week or so with another video. Uh, maybe we'll go back to the brewing side because I still got that going too. So anyways, have a great day.